Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Rinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Rinda Tonight we'll do Bhagavad Gita. So this is chapter 9, text 29, verse number, um, the, the confidential knowledge, most confidential knowledge. Samoham sabhabhute suhu Name dvesho strinapriyaha Yabhajanti to Mambhaktya Mai Te Te Shu Chapyaham Samoham Sarabhu Te Su Name Dvesho Srinapriyaha Ye Bhajanti to Mambhaktya Mai te te shu chapyaham Samoham sarabhu te su Name dwe sho strina priyaha Ye bhajanti tu mambhakya Mai te su te mai te te shu chapyaham Samoham 
Sama. Equally disposed. Aham. I. Sarva Bhuteshu. To all living entities. Na. No one. Me. To me. Dvesha. Hateful. Asti. Is. Na. Nor. Priya. Dear. Yea. Those who. Bhajanti. Render transcendental service. To. But. Mum. Unto me. Bhaktiya. In devotion. Mai. Are in me. Te. Such persons. Tesu. In them. Cha. Also. Api. Certainly. Aham. I. Hmm. The Lord speaking. Translation. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I'm equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Hmm. Okay, so this verse sounds a little contradictory. Where's the contradiction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not partial, but he is. <laughs> he's partial to who? Why? If he says I'm not partial, but then he's he's seen as being partial, then what, what is it, what is it? Is it because of our vision or because he is partial? By? Oh, okay. Because sense, yeah, because they, the Lord is like a mirror. <laughs> Whatever you hold in front of a mirror, you see the reflection accordingly. So, in general, people ignore God, and so he gives them whatever they need according to what is their desires through either the material energy, sometimes he gives directly, but for the devotee, he takes direct concern. So this is what Prabhupada will say here. One may question here if the devotee, Krishna is equal to everyone and no one is a special friend, when then why does he take a special interest in the devotees who are always engaged in transcendental service? But this is not discrimination. It is natural. Any man in this material world may be charitably disposed Yet, he has a special interest in his own children. The Lord claims that every living entity in whatever form is his son, and so he provides everyone with a general supply of the necessity of life. He is just like a cloud which pours rain all over, whether it falls on the rock or on land or on water. But for his devotees, he gives special attention. Such devotees are mentioned here. They are always in Krishna consciousness, and therefore they are always transcendentally situated in Krishna. The very phrase Krishna consciousness suggests that those who are in such consciousness are living transcendentalists situated in him. The Lord says here distinctly, Maite, they are in me. Naturally, as a result, the Lord is also in them. This is reciprocal. This is also explains the word yaitha mam papadyante tamsa taima bhajami amham. Whoever surrenders unto me, proportionally I take care of them. This transcendental reciprocation exists because both the Lord and the devotee are conscious. When a diamond is set in a golden ring, it looks very nice. The gold is glorified and at the same time the diamond is glorified. The Lord and the living entity glitter, and when the living entity becomes inclined to the service of the Lord, Supreme Lord, he looks like gold. The Lord is a diamond, and so this combination is very nice. Living entities in, in a pure state are called devotees. Mm. Interesting. Uh, the, well, let me say that again. Living entities in a pure state are called devotees. So what does that mean? 
living entities in a pure state are called devotees. We call everybody who's engaged in devotional service devotee. But really, the actual terminology as it applies to the definition is that those who are fully engaged in devotional service, the word devotee applies. Otherwise, it's aspiring devotee, neophyte devotee, practicing devotee. So that's what that phrase means. It's like the, the word has a certain uh, connotation, but it has a denotation. A connotation is what we, th what is the common meaning, and the denotation is the actual meaning. And the actual meaning of devotee means one who is fully engaged in devotional service. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Lord becomes the devotee of his devotees. Mm. If a reciprocal relationship is not present between the devotee and the Lord, then there is no personal philosophy. In the impersonal philosophy, there is no re reciprocation between the supreme and the living entity. But in the personal philosophy, there is. The example is often given that the Lord is like a desire tree. And whatever one wants from this desire tree, the Lord surprise, supplies. But here, the explanation is more complete. The Lord is here stated to be partial to his devotees. This is the manifestation of the Lord's special mercy to his devotees. The Lord's reciprocation should not be considered to be under the law of karma. It belongs to the transcendental situation in which the Lord and the devotees function. So this relationship is not a material. Devotional service to the Lord is not an activity of this material world. It is part of the spiritual world where eternity, bliss, and knowledge predominate. Omagyan timirandasya, kinajana salakaya, chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha, shri chaitanya mano bistam stapti sam yena bhutale, svayam rupa kadam mayam dadanti svam padanti kam nama om vishnu padaya, krishna prestaya bhutale, shimakti bhakti. Divaranta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gaudavani Pacharine, Yevasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine, Pancha Kalpa Tubisya, Kripa Sindhu Pe Vacha, Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar. Shivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Rai Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita the Lord says Yegatam Mam Prapadyante Tamsta Taipa Bhajami Aham Mama Vartvanu Vartante Manusha Parta Sarvasyaha So he says that uh, as you approach me I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Kunti. So he's saying to Arjuna that actually um, everyone is following his path. What does it mean everyone is following his path? We say, does everyone follow the Lord's path? What does that mean? Who can give a little understanding? Where the Lord says, everyone is following my path. The Lord or yes, anything. anything, right? He's either everyone is either under the Daivi Prakriti or the Para Prakriti or the Apara Prakriti. Daivi Prakriti and Para Prakriti, right? Daivi Prakriti is the spiritual energy, transcendental, and the Para Prakriti is the material energy. Both are energies of the Lord, but they function differently. This verse really indicates that that the Lord is not partial, he's equal. And he doesn't have anything to gain from any relationship. He therefore, he reciprocates according to how the devotee, or how the person uh, acts. 
people in the material world have a problem with this. They can't understand why they suffer. <laughs> and if the God is all good and so many, so many good people are dying because of uh, whatever reason. There was that one, uh, one book that was famous many, many years ago. It was probably one of the best, best bestsellers, the biggest bestseller ever on the market of books. And it was, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? That was the name of the book. Why do, good th bad, why do bad things happen to good people? And it was written by uh, a rabbi, a Jewish priest. And uh, he was inspired to write the book because he had a son who was born with a very rare disease called progeria. And the boy, this disease works in such a way as you, you go through your whole life. The aging process is speed up very fast. So he died of old age at 14 years old, the boy. It's a, it's a disease, I think it comes from Africa, and you don't see it too much in, in European countries, but it's there. Uh, it's called progeria. And so being a rabbi, a man of God who had faith in God, he was thinking, here is an innocent boy. He never did anything wrong, and uh, why is he you know, like this? So, you know, people question God, well, you know, why is God allowing for good people to suffer? So his, uh, his premise was, he changed his idea around. He said, God is all good. He's good, but he's not all powerful. And that was his premise because although he wants to help everyone and be everyone's well-wisher and best friend, because there are so many living entities, and he has so many <laughs> responsibilities. He somehow misses something <laughs> once in a while. So therefore, people are victimized by the fact that he's not on top of everything. He's a bad manager. <laughs> so that book really not only was one of the biggest bestsellers in the world ever, it was on the the New York Times best-selling list for, the, for years. But it also created a, a type of philosophy among the Christians called the, theodicy, theodicy, to uh, understanding God's relationship with man in the world. What is God's relationship with man? So that opened up a whole discussion. Of course, we understand that when a person takes birth, it's not their first life. And they carry with them karma, daiva, netrena. They carry their previous results of their activities into this life if they haven't gotten those results previously. And therefore, people get good things, just like sometimes even evil people, they have a lot of good fortune. <laughs> and a so-called good person who never harms anyone, is friendly to everyone, does charitable for his neighbors, they suffer. <laughs> so therefore, people become confused and they give up of God. Prabhupada talks about how, how um, during World War II, uh, both in Germany and in England, uh, the women who had either husbands brothers or sons in the war, they were praying to the Lord, please make my husband, my son, my brother come back. And uh, many of them didn't come back, were killed, and so they gave up on God. They prayed to God, and God didn't, you know, fulfill their prayers. So, but they don't see the big picture, and they don't know how the Lord works. He puts everything under the control of his laws, and if one follows the laws, one gets the benefit of the law. Just like a good person in the state, when they follow the laws, they have so many benefits. One who breaks the law and sometimes is punished and has to go to prison, 
or is restricted from certain benefits. So in the same way, the Lord is he's equal, but he has a way of organizing things so everyone gets the results of their activities, at least materially. Just like, I'll give you an example of what's happening right now. It's um, just like we have this, um, you know, this, this pandemic going on in the real world. And we know that um, people are, in general, are sinful. Meat eaters, killing animals, uh, engaging in all kinds of licit, illicit activities, intoxication, illicit sex, so many forms of sinful activities people are uh, engaged in. And so that, that karma is suppressing on the world and therefore it causes reactions on different levels. And what happens is that the more sinful the collective karma is, the more population goes down towards the lower modes. In other words, the modes of passion, the modes of ignorance become stronger and stronger. And then when the modes of passion and ignorance become stronger and stronger, as Jiva Goswami mentions, it's actually mentioned here in the Srimad Ba. Can you, uh, somebody give me that seventh canto? It's over there. Yeah, it's right there. I'll read one verse just to illustrate what I'm saying here. Thank you. Okay, this is from the first chapter of the seventh canto, verse number eight. It says here, when the quality of goodness is prominent in the world, the sages and demigods flourish with the help of that quality. with which they are f infused and surcharged by the Supreme Lord. Similarly, when the mode of passion is prominent, the demons flourish. And when the mode of ignorance is prominent, the yakshas and yet rakshas, fl rakshashas flourish. The Supreme Lord personality of God is present in everyone's heart, fostering the reactions of sattvagun, rajagun, and tamagun. And what does the first line say? The Supreme Personality of Godhead is not partial to anyone. <laughs> so when the, when the mode of passion is, is prominent, the demons are in control, so the Lord favors the demons because mm -hmm. he honors the modes. When the mode of ignorance is, in, is the prominent, he, fi he favors those who are yakshas and rakshas. And when the modes of passion, uh, uh, goodness, he favors the demigods and the devotees. So he's equal. He doesn't interfere with the, en the activities of the modes of material nature. That's why even when before Krishna appeared on the planet uh, 5,000 years ago, there was a lot of sinful activities going on. And people were being persecuted a lot and the demons were flourishing. But it wasn't until the de to Mother Earth, Bhumi herself actually came a law to Lord Brahma and said, <laughs> Lord Brahma, you know, my, uh, the burden of sin is weigh, weighting me down more and more, so please do something. So Lord Brahma gathered up Indra along with all the chief demigods and they went to the uh, ocean of milk and offered beautiful prayers to the Lord. And the Lord, of course, knows what's going on, but only when they actually made a petition to ask the Lord to intervene and, and save the situation, did he do it like that? Otherwise, he favors the modes of material nature. So just like what's going on right now, so the demons are in control right now mm -hmm. because the mode of passion is so strong and people are very sinful. And what happens is when that continues, people take birth who come from lower planets, such as you know planets below the earth, who are of lower consciousness, sometimes demoniac person, and they take birth in these higher planets because these higher planets, the karma, collective karma goes down. So when the collective karma goes down, then that becomes a breeding ground for that particular mode. So therefore people will take birth 
from the lower modes and come up to the earth planet and take birth. And therefore, this place becomes more sinful. And when the devotees become prominent and the mode of goodness becomes, then you'll see more and more saintly persons take birth and the mode of goodness becomes stronger and finally, actually, it becomes, then it becomes more transcendental. So the Lord's not partial. He's not partial. That's why when people say, well, why doesn't he do something? There's so many problems. <laughs> he does for those who take shelter of him. But those who don't take shelter of him, what can he do? He, le he allows the material energy to work in such a way. Therefore, he gives everyone the results of their karma like that. So people are sinful, and they still want, don't want to suffer. <laughs> it's contradictory. And people are, are um, well, back to that one point, is that because of the, collect not collective, but because how karma works, it's interesting, it doesn't necessarily manifest itself immediately. There's a thing called delayed karma. So say you were pious in the last life and you were born in a rich family. And there because of you, because of that higher birth, you had so many facilities for sense gratification. So you use those facilities and you became degraded. And you became more and more engaged in maybe even wrong, just like the example of Ajamil, born in the Brahmin family, but got allured by a prostitute and everything changed. And he became very sinful. He was cheating, lying, kidnapping people, and doing all kinds of sinful activities. So anyone, it doesn't, your birth is an indication of your karma, but you can change that according to your desire. So when people see uh, so-called bad people getting good results from material life, such as riches and other facilities, they think, how is that possible? Where these good people, they're getting the opposite. Yeah, right? It's logical, right? This, this is a question. I'm, th I'm probably sure maybe even many of us were asking these same questions at one time. You know, well, why doesn't God do something? <laughs> or why doesn't he do something for me? <laughs> Um, but I'll give you an example of how karma works. And again, of course, devotees are not under the influence of karma. This is for the materialists. You have a silo. You know what a silo is? Where they keep grain to feed the animals, right? And then this, you find them on farms, yeah. So on the bottom, there is the door, and you open it, and you, and you put your bucket there, and the grains come out, and you can fill it. But when you want to fill it, where do you put the, the grains? You put it on the top. So if you put it on the top, what you put on the top doesn't come out immediately. It takes time to come to the, to the bottom. So at the same time, when people are putting their bad karma into their collective karma, and then gradually it will come. And people's good, People may be good, but in the, in the past, they may have done some evil, so that's coming out now. So what people are getting immediately is not necessarily what they are like. They're getting results from previous activities like that. So the only way you can change that, either good or bad, is take the devotional service. As soon as one takes the devotional service, their previous karma stops. That means you don't, there's no more mm, putting in to the collective karma, but still, there is still some residue of karma that may come out. So devotees may also find themselves in difficult situations because of previous activities. But Krishna always protects his devotees. That's the point. So for example, Prabhupada would give the example just like a murderer, if one was a murderer in a previous life, then they have to suffer by uh, getting killed themselves. And that's the, what they call it, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. The Bible speaks like that. 
But when one comes to devotional service, engages in the Lord's service under the guidance of his representative, then that karma is reduced to something very small. And as Srila Prabhupada would say, one will cut their finger. <laughs> in other words, because they were a murderer in a previous life, they came to devotional service, the reaction will be so slight. <laughs> but there will be something like that. So that's the benefit of taking shelter of the Lord. One is no longer influenced by devotional. That's why the Krishna says in this verse, one, who's one who engages in devotional service is a friend in me and I am a friend in him. Because devotee and the Lord become united in the activities of devotional service. Whereas the non-devotees they're under the influence of his external energy and they have to get the results of their good and bad karma, either coming immediately or coming in due course of time. So this is the benefit one receives in devotional. So that's why the Lord says, I'm equal. I'm equal because I'm giving the results of your activities like that. It's an interesting verse. And this is, uh, I think there's many common commentators that speak on this verse to show how the Lord appears to be partial, but he's not partial. <laughs> he's not partial. And Prabhupada makes that point here like that. He puts the whole thing in motion, and if you follow it, you get the results. If you go outside of it, then you get another result like that. Sometimes we say when... Uh, a devotee is acting outside of the process of devotional service, then the Lord will do something to bring that devotee back. And that may cause the devotee some inconvenience. But if the devotee sees it as the mercy of the Lord, then gradually they will be able to understand and then change and come back and be, again, situated nicely in Krishna consciousness. But Krishna is very fair. <laughs> He's equal. And Prabhupada always uses the example of a judge. And this is the one he uses all the time. The judge sits on the bench. He hears the lawyers arguing. And he awards one, one person a large amount of money. And another person, he condemns them to go to jail. So is the judge partial? No. He's acting according to the law, and he's giving uh, the results according to a person, what they deserve. So, But people can't see that. They expect to act anything way they want and expect to get, and expect that because I pray to the Lord, I, you know, I should get the results of my prayer. But your actions speak louder than your words. This is the point. Actions always speak louder than words. So when one has to act in such a way that their prayers are in line with their activities, <laughs> or their activities are in line with their prayers and not vice versa. Because the Lord knows the heart of all living entities. So this is why still the non-devotees still have a problem. And as I was referring to that one book, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? Uh, our devotees, it was actually uh, Ravinder Sarupabhu, he actually wrote uh, a response article to that book. That book came out in the 1970s, right around the beginning of the 1970s. And he, his, the name of the article was, you know, bad things don't happen to good people. <laughs> bad things happen to bad people. <laughs> and good things happen to good people. But we have to see the bigger picture and not just look at what's happening in the immediate. <laughs> so there's where the, there's where the non-devotees, the materialists get confused. They always expect, they have to know that God is good, he's kind, and so many, you know, so many good qualities, but they can't understand why he doesn't do something to change the world around and make it you know, the way they want to make it, <laughs> whatever way they see it. 
But he, he acts in due course of time, just like when uh, Prahlad Maharaj was being harassed by his father. And then uh, uh, and but even before then, when he was when Harani Kashibu was harassing all the demigods, the demigods were complaining. They went to Lord Vishnu and, and said, "You know, why don't you do something about this guy? You know <laughs> He's such a big rascal. <laughs> He's causing everything to go haywire." And the Lord said, I know all the activities of Harani Kashipu, but when he starts to tease my pure devotee, then I will act. <laughs> so here's the point. Only when he really started to harass Prahlad Maharaj did the Lord finally come and do something directly. Um, so um, the same way that the Lord is always there for his devotees, as long as we take shelter of his of him. If we don't take shelter of him, the Lord even says that, you know, I like to give protection to everyone, but everyone doesn't want my protection. <laughs> they want to arrange their own way of becoming protected or saved in the world, just like, I don't want to get too controversial now. <laughs> I better not. So anyway, yeah, just like, if you maintain a nice, healthy regime, you know, you keep yourself clean and you follow all the health requirements, generally you stay healthy. You don't get sick from any diseases. But if you don't keep yourself within the line of proper health care, if you eat at any time, you sleep whenever you want to, or if you don't maintain good hygienic habits, then it's easy to get sick. It happens all the time. So if one follows the principles of good health, one can stay healthy. And take good care, of course. Um, there's always dangers. But generally, that's the principle. That's why Prabhupada writes that in the Bhagavatam, that the generally people get sick in this age because they don't follow any regulated lifestyle. They do whatever they want, whenever they want. Regulation is actually the key to good health. <laughs> if you're not regulated, you'll find yourself struggling to maintain. So keeping, because the body is a machine and it requires maintenance and at different times and different cares like that. So, so in the same way, it's don't, we don't need some big programs for, for becoming healthy. We don't really need so many doctors all we need to do is understand how to take care of yourself. And that takes a little bit of intelligence and maybe a little research. And you can maintain yourself nicely. Generally, unless you have bad health karma. There are people who have bad health karma. <laughs> but that's another thing, and that's rare also. Just but generally, this is the principle. So the Lord follows how people reciprocate with him, or how he, and the Lord, and the Lord is reciprocate. He's take, he's giving the sunshine to the demons who are evil. He's giving water. He's giving light. He's giving air. He's giving food. He's giving so many things in the form of material energy, even to those who are who don't like him or find reasons to criticize him, or even don't even believe in him. So he's not only is he not partial, but he's even goes, you know, I mean partial, but he even goes beyond that to take care of those who don't even really want to recognize his, you know, his gifts. The Lord's very kind. But still, people can only go up to a certain point. When they're in trouble, if they, re if they think, you know, just like there was one devotee, his father was a very hunter-type guy. He would, you know, he'd keep many rifles. He was always hunting. And he was pretty much a, a, a non-devotee in the true sense of this term. So he got old and then he was dying. 
So when he was dying, he was becoming frightened. And when he was becoming frightened, he called out to his wife, please bring my gun, please bring my gun. Because he was seeing the Yamadutas, and he was thinking, I'm going to sh shoot the Yamadutas. <laughs> but it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, it's a true story. And this one devotee, he, he told that about his father, how when he was dying, he called to his, his wife for his gun. <laughs> So yeah, so this is the non-devotees always want to protect themselves by their own intelligence, their own arrangements like that. But devotee, Rake Krishna Moreke, Hare Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna wants to kill you, you can't stand alive. <laughs> you are finished. <laughs> and if Krishna wants to save you, somebody can have a gun to your head and nothing will happen. <laughs> Yeah, like the war in the Ukraine. There was one, one uh, the war in Ukraine. This was just told to me a few years ago. One, one devotee got captured by the, the Russians because the Russians were fighting the Ukrainians. This was a few years ago. And uh, so one Russian soldier, you know, when he, this one devotee, he was, he was kind of engaged in a lot of activities. He was like a leader. So once they captured him, then they finally decided to kill him. So the guy put the gun to his head and he was about to kill him. The devotee's praying to Radharani to save him. And another soldier comes up and says, come on, we got something to do right now. Forget that. And, you know, he left, both of them left and the devotee remained alive and eventually he escaped. <laughs> by Radharani's mercy. He prayed to Radharani, and Radharani saved him. <laughs> yeah, so many stories how devotees, and I just like, <laughs> I just got a letter yesterday, one of my disciples in uh, America. So he drives Uber, <laughs> you know. And so he, he had to go to work, so he took another Uber car to get to go to work, another driver. You know, the Uber, these hired drivers, you can get. You know. So he's uh, he's sitting in the car with this other Uber driver, and they're on, he's getting to, to go to where he's going to go to work. So the car starts losing control. I don't know how. I, mean, I think it was the weather was bad. Starts skidding off the road, and he's heading for a big, big, big wall. And then the car is spinning, and on the other side, where the car is going, there are trucks coming, big ones. So when that happens, he just said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And then the car just came to a stop, off to a side, the trucks moved away, and nothing happened. <laughs> the car was all right, and both drivers were fine. <laughs> huh? Yeah, nothing, yeah, it was all right, yeah, it was just... Uh, yeah, he just spun off the road, but looked like he was going to go get hit with the oncoming traffic or crash into the wall. Either one, they had it. But as soon as he started chanting, everything changed. <laughs> that was just just yesterday. I got the letter. <laughs> he said, "This is the second time Krishna saved me. <laughs> the first time he was a store owner, and some guy came in with a gun." <laughs> It was going to kill him and rob him, but somehow he just started chanting Hare Krishna and the guy got confused and left. <laughs> so, so those who take shelter of the Lord, the Lord is there to protect like that. And those who, you know, expect to get the Lord's protection, but at the same time live against the, the, the laws of the Lord, they get something different. You can't say, well, you know, my dear Lord, give me this, give me that, give me protection, give me this, but then you do all kinds of nonsense on the side. You, know. you have to live in such a way that you, you can live according to the guidance of the Lord, the instructions of the Lord. Then one is protected by the Lord. That's why he's not partial to anyone. Okay, so these are some... This is a very 
significant verse. It's a verse that is discussed quite often amongst uh, transcendentalists, people who are well versed in the knowledge of spiritual principles. This is a very interesting discussion verse. And there have been, I think the, uh, the commentators like Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Jiva Goswami have commented on this verse. It's interesting. Okay, so thank you. Any questions? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Um, I would have two questions if possible. Uh, one is when you were talking about the silo example of karma, mm. and when one becomes a devotee, the karma stops going on the yeah. top. Yeah. I want to ask, when you said devotee, does that mean like in the true meaning of the word devotee, or like also practicing devotee, or which you were mentioning before also in the commentary? Well, it's called parabdha karma. Parabdha karma is a Krishna gives you, lets you see a little bit of your past karma in the form of your pre present attachments. And you still, you'll be a, you're a devotee, but you still have attachments in for some material desires or so, whatever. And Krishna will let you see that, and it looks like karma, but it's not. He's just helping you to arrange for you to become aware of it so you can stop it and ultimately move forward like that. But there's no more, this is like, they call it the residue of karma, like that. It's not like, you know, if somebody was a murderer and then they joined the Hare Krishna movement the next day, every all their karma is gone. No, it, it takes a while. <laughs> It'll take a little bit of a while before they, um, actually, everything stops. The Prabhupada uses the example when you pull out the plug of a fan, the fan keeps turning. So that keep that turning is still the, the residue karma that is left. And if as long as you don't put the plug back in, the fan will stop. <laughs> so for a devotee, it looks like karma, but that's the Lord's way of just helping us to get over the, uh, the reactions of our previous uh, material activities. And then it'll stop after some time. If you stay, if you stay in Krishna consciousness, it'll stop. Mm -hmm. But if you go back out and try for material things again and come back again, like there's some people they like to go out for, become a devotee for a little while and then go out and check out the material world for a while, and then come back and chant some more, take some more prasad, and then go back out again. But that's not, that one, Krishna knows everything, so he can't cheat Krishna. <laughs> that person doesn't get much mercy, or hardly any. Can I ask the second one? Yeah, did you digest so the first one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so with the silo then, does one's material exist existence continues until the silo is completely depleted? Material existence is stopped, except some the residue reactions from previous activities are still coming. That's all. As long as, yeah, nothing more is going in. That means your material life is stopped. But you can still perform material activities. But when you perform material activities, inadvertently, not consciously, in devotional service, Krishna just gives you a little slap to remind you, hey, this is not where you should be. Yeah. As long as you stay in devotional service, you're no longer plugged into the material energy. But we don't know how much you know, what of our, how deep our attachments go. They go very deep. The more you purify your heart, the more you'll see your attachments. <laughs> so karma is very hard to describe. And the jai si panchitattva ki jai.
But just stay in devotional service. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Even if it hurts for a little while, it's okay. That hurting, that little, what we call a little chutney. It's like a chutney. Sweet, but it's hot too. <laughs> that hotness is good because it's purifying. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about this uh, story, Ajumil. So I can remember that uh, Prabhupada uh, wrote that uh, even if you say Mahamantra unwell or in a joking way, that uh, the result is, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it's like that is, the karma is finished, that it's beyond karma. Even once, like if you go Harinam and some say Haribo. Yeah, and that's uh, called Namabas. So this kind of uh, saying, uh, holy name, is beyond karma. Karma stops at the time. Yeah, but they say Haribo, but then the next minute they go back and do something else. And then <laughs> they don't change their life. <laughs> they yeah. just, so, of course, because of the, they still have bad habits, so <laughs> they will proceed with... <laughs> yeah, they just build their karma up again. Yes. <laughs> but That's somehow true. they came to the level zero. Yeah, oh. at that one point. That's called Nama Bas. It's even better than Nama Parad, because sometimes even devotees chant Nama Parad, we're chanting with offense, but sometimes a non-devotee will, will just like, will chant, like like you mentioned yeah and then that 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 is very powerful it gets a lot of because there's no pretense there there's no offense there they're just naturally chanting mm -hmm. but if we're chanting and we're we still have some material attachments and we're trying to fulfill the material attachments while we're practicing devotional service then that's Nama Parad. <coughs> yeah, that's, um, there's four kinds of Nama Bas, jokingly, accidentally, uh, criticizingly, like, ah, oh, you Hare Krishna, these guys are a waste of time. <laughs> Get a job, will you? <laughs> Do something. <laughs> no, and, you know, that's, you know, because Even said criticizing. Ha they said Hare Krishna. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's called derisively. The word is derisively. Deriding someone or finding some fault like that. Accidentally, jokingly. There's four ways that Namabhas manifests. Sing Sankita, Sankita, Helena, where... Prabhupada tells the story about the the Muslim who was being chased by a a wild boar, and he was yelling "Haram, Haram, 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 Ha, Ram, Hari Ram." Haram in Arabic means abominable. <laughs> means he was calling out the word abominable. This is terrible, but because he was saying Haram, he was. He got, Prabhupada said he got liberated when he died. <laughs> yeah, the holy name is very powerful, but we have to chant it with devotion. Hmm. So it's so strong. So how does it look like that even chanting for years, it looks like, like a slow process? <laughs> Fully yeah, it's not only slow, sometimes it looks like you're going backwards. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like that too. Like things were better years ago. <laughs> but that's all part of Krishna's way of making you more dependent on him. <laughs> Calling out for more with more helplessness and more dependence. He inspires that mood of, 
for dependence by sometimes making it difficult for us so we can just call out with more more helplessness. But if you stay in the process, you'll see that, that gradually, with the mercy of the great souls, and the spiritual master's mercy, and your sincere endeavor, everything will eventually come to the stage where you'll actually reach the stage of bhava, natural attraction for Krishna in devotion. And that there's a sweet taste that comes with that. So about this dependence, if I can ask one question, like, uh, like, listen, no matter how old you are, whatever you're doing, like, it's all, it's, you can read about this balance between material and spiritual. So then, like, you can think, okay, it's good to invest as much as possible in spiritual, but then someone said, but like, you know, maybe you're not in material in the balance. But on the other hand, if it depends, Krishna, for, for devotees, we balance by making sure we take care of our body. That's the only balance we have to do. So you have balance, you get proper rest, you get proper prasadam, you, you take care of your body. If you have family, you do that. Yeah. But devotees don't want to go to the movies and watch, you know, you know, or read books about, you know, material topics, you know. So that's these... Balance means to take care of the body at the same time engage in devotional service. Sometimes people neglect their body in the name of devotional service and then after some time they find their health goes down because of that. So the balance is there. If you have family, then you take care of the responsibility of the family. That's part of the balance. But for example, if you have family, then like, you know, like I said, okay, I will engage in Sankirtan. So this is one of the best services you can do. And for sure, <laughs> Krishna will like it and he will provide somehow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But your family won't understand that. <laughs> but Krishna will be happy. <laughs> There are many examples, like uh, when uh, I, I think that you uh, were narrating, too, narrating uh, yeah. this story that when uh, this Brahmana wrote, uh, uh, marked in the yeah. Bhagavad Gita, like, you know, they are not uh, directly uh, reciprocating. And then Krishna and Balaram yeah. brought uh, grains to <laughs> his wife. Yeah, Krishna is constantly giving us whatever we need in our devotional service, but we're not always aware of how he's coming or whatever we need. We sometimes, we mix up our needs with our desires. What I want and what I need may not be the same. But Krishna sometimes fulfills your desires, but if it, if it takes you away from Krishna, then he won't do it again. <laughs> okay, so how was Sankirtan today? Good? It's always good. It's always good. Uh, that's a stupid question. <laughs> so just by filling the air with the holy name, yeah, it's, you're it's pushing back the influence of the modes of passion and ignorance. Really? Harnam was really amazing. Like we did it really big round. It was quite an empty Ljubljana city, but Kirtan was really amazing, I think. Yeah. The bodies, when they see nobody around, they chant louder. <laughs> 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 so maybe people will hear and come closer. <laughs> yeah. There's the, the devotional service is not dependent on results. <laughs> it's simply dependent on our efforts to please Krishna, follow his instructions, that's all. Okay, so thank you very much, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.